What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Mumbo Jumbo himself has said that his season 8 base is done, the outside is done, and the inside is done. He'll probably still make a few changes to it later on in the season, but the whole thing is basically finished for now. So we're going to be taking a look at all of Mumbo Jumbo's bases throughout his Hermitcraft seasons. Starting way back in Hermitcraft Season 2, this lovely little base of his. I think this was a great base. While it may not have the absolute scale that you have in today's Hermitcraft bases, it's still a great base. This hallway here was for people who donated uh, to him. It had the amount they donated and their names. It was a cool little way to thank everybody who donated to him. For some reason, I cannot open chests on this Hermitcraft download. Really weird, sometimes they're a bit glitchy though. This was basically his storage room though. He had a bunch of different farms all around this area and he even had one of his classic hostile mob farms right above this base. This is definitely a very classic mumbo jumbo start to Hermitcraft. There are of course some great base features here, but it's not any crazy type of build. It's not what you'd really expect from a builder, which Mumbo never was until one of these later seasons, but it did have a bunch of different farms and really showed off some of his redstone skills. This season was definitely a learning curve for Mumbo, learning how to play on the Hermitcraft server and everything like that, but it turned out great. His base was definitely very cool all the way back in season two. You can see that mob farm up there that I was talking about and there's a lot of cool things around this base to go and explore. If you want to download any of these Hermitcraft worlds for yourself, they're all on the Hermitcraft website and you can go check them out there, download them for yourself and play them. Some of them are super laggy though because there's just so much going on, so be wary of that. One thing I do really love about this base though is the terrain of it. Obviously it's built in a jungle, but then like this storage room here is just out exposed to the open. I think that's just a really cool feature for this type of terrain. Next up, we are checking out Season 3, and this was the Mumble. They were playing on an Amplified world this season, which was super interesting. There's a lot of really cool features with that. Mumbo decided to build this base inside of a swamp, and that was one of the things he said he regretted later, just because it changed kind of the watercolors and everything that were going to be a part of this base. This base is definitely super interesting. I love all the ice spikes and everything. He also has the same hostile mob farm that he built in season two above this base as well. And he even decided to build that hostile mob farm in season four above his base too. The interior of this base is definitely super interesting. This right here is kind of his uh, area in between all the farms and storage system. Over here he's got a sugarcane and melon farm, which I don't know if this design even works anymore, but it's still very interesting and it all funnels down into a hopper system beneath this bridge right here. It's crazy to me how small this base is compared to some of his later season bases, but how big this base is compared to a lot of what you'd see from your average Minecraft player. The storage system is pretty big. He's also got this railway system that leads up from his mine, so it's very quick to get up and down from there. And then up here, there's the rest of his base. As always in his bases, there are a lot of different farms and also a lot of different fun little things that you wouldn't really expect. Like over here, the enchanting table just immediately pops up with all the bookshelves you need for a full enchantment. And then later down the line, his bedroom also, once you walk in, emits light from glowstone that you couldn't see in the walls beforehand. Overall, I think this base was super cool. I loved all the different rooms in the interior and everything. The outside is very cool looking as well. He made the hostile mob farm actually work really well with this base, but I really like all the ice spikes and everything. But it really goes to show how far Mumbo has come as a builder, especially in Season 7 and Season 8. Next up in season four, Mumbo decided to build the drone base. And this base was pretty cool just because it reminds me a lot of a skyblock base. Something that you have to build in the sky. Of course, he had a lot down on the ground too, but the main portion of this base and his storage system was up in the sky. Down on the ground, he had pretty much everything you could farm in Minecraft, all laid out under this red concrete and glass. This build, of course, isn't anything crazy by Hermitcraft means, but I think it is a really fun build and was definitely great for Mumbo considering he was doing a ton of farming this season. It's also drastically different from the rest of the bases you'll see on this server because most everybody was building in the Badlands biome and he was one of the only ones that was on the outside of it and he also built up in the air. Also had a nice amount of diamonds in this when he left. 
Also three corners of the space or three of the drone wings of the space were iron farms as you can see here. These are of course very old iron farm designs based off just the amount of villagers and the amount of doors rather than all the workbenches and everything you need now. Definitely very different iron farms back then. And then the fourth wing was the storage room which we already took a look at. Next up is season five, his guardian farm base. And this was a super cool base. He did say it was pretty restrictive though since he had to build everything in these diamonds that he put. Uh, but it is still a very cool base and he made the farms work inside of it which I think is amazing. Over here we have a hostile mob farm as well as all these diagonal farms on the corner which I think is a great idea. They're all producing sugar cane uh, which is great for rockets because of course the center will be producing some gunpowder as well. This is definitely the part of the base that worked the best. It was the one that fit in this diamond better than any of the other builds. These builds though are jam packed with farms and I think it's super cool. Definitely a very interesting idea to uh, expand out from the center guardian farm. And you can even see that the floor of the ocean is covered in sea lanterns. So you can actually see the entire ocean floor when you're down in the glass below. This build did feature probably his coolest storage room to date though. This is the storage room right here. It's in different segments and I think it is definitely my favorite storage room of his so far. Now I can definitely see how the season eight storage room is much better for actually finding all of your items and everything. But I do think that this is just a super cool design having all of these in different sections. You can see this is the wood section. He had a redstone section, even a nether section. It's just a very cool design having it all split up like this. This design though was all built around the guardian farm in the center where the storage room for that was. And this was a huge storage room because the farm was super efficient and was producing all the materials that he needed to actually build his base. Next up, season six, such a cool base. This huge sphere with the different quadrants of biomes. Definitely one of my favorite of his bases just because I really like this biome quadrant and how he built the farms underneath. He was trying to avoid the mistake of season five where he really limited himself on his farm space. So he put them underneath and built individual buildings for them so he didn't have to worry about the symmetry of it or anything like that. The storage room was also in the holes that expand out from the center point on top there and go in between the biomes that he made. I think that's a great idea. It looks really good and it's also pretty easy to find items in that storage system and also to automatically sort them. Uh, down below though is where all his farms are. I think these all look super cool and they tie in with the base really well and he didn't have to build them symmetrically like he did in season five. This base was definitely super cool and this season is where Mumbo really started to become a builder. Season 7, such a beautiful base that he built right on the edge of the jungle here. The base was also alive which I thought was a crazy cool feature having that heartbeat in the base. Although if you do explore the base it is a little annoying to listen to as you're just walking around the base. This thing was absolutely massive. The outside pillars were actually based off a Vesco design of what he built in his own survival world, but Mumbo tried to uh, bring them over into this world and I think he did a great job of that. This is the redstone in the center that controls all the lights and the heartbeat of the actual base itself. So unless Mumbo actually went and made sure the base stayed alive every day, it was eventually going to die, which I don't remember if it ever did. Considering the heartbeat is still on after the season has ended, I'd say he kept it alive. I really love the floor of this base and how overgrown and also misplaced everything is. I think that really is where Mumbo started uh, to become a builder as he realized that not everything needed to be perfectly flat and giving this floor a lot of texture made it a lot more interesting and very cool to explore. The storage room, of course, is automatically sorted. A very cool design as well, although still, I gotta say, his season five base was still my favorite storage room design. Here though, he has plenty of storage for every item in the game. He has a lot of them marked out for what items go in, and he also has some places uh, for miscellaneous items that don't go into the storage system. And just below the storage system is a vault room where he can keep all his diamonds and prevent anybody from stealing them. I gotta say this base also looks absolutely incredible with the shaders on. This is the complimentary shaders pack. Definitely one of my favorite shader packs out there and this base just looks amazing in it. All the lighting and the uh, greenery, the overgrowth here just looks incredible with this shader pack. 
And last but definitely not least, my favorite of Mumbo Jumbo's bases, his Season 8 Hermitcraft base. So he has recently finished this up. Uh, he has a giant monkey statue on top, and he has the beautiful houses covering the mountainside of this armchair. I think this is definitely my favorite base overall. The interior he just finished up in one of his most recent episodes, where he actually made the roof of uh, the storage room. I don't know if he plans to build uh, in other parts of the uh, mountain, because there is still a lot of room in there. So he definitely has some options of building in there, and he might do it later in the season. But for now, the base is completely done. Not only does the whole thing look amazing with the statue of course, the custom trees, and the beautiful buildings that cover it, but it also has a super cool Batman door which I think is a great part of this base. It is slightly broken right now because of a chicken laying eggs on his tripwires, but the Batman door splits open the waterfall and he can fly straight into the base. Mumbo has definitely been working a lot outside of his comfort zone on this base, trying to become a better builder, and he has done such a good job. I think building like this really just takes a lot of patience and time to get the details all right, and he's picked up a few building tricks that have made this thing just look insanely cool. That is all that we have for you guys today though, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button, and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well so you can see all the rest of our Minecraft content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.